All right, folks, it is probably, uh, it is two o'clock Eastern according to um, my time. I'm actually at the 1 p.m. Central time zone, but it is, has hit one o'clock. So thank you guys so much for joining us this, good, uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are in the world today. We really appreciate your, your time. Um, today, the title of our webinar is What are the Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators? Throughout today's webinar, I am going to be shorting, shortening that, the Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators, to the COONI. So if you hear that acronym, that just means the um, Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators. Greetings, Miriam from Afghanistan. Welcome. It's, it, we're glad to have you. So before we jump, in, uh, jump into things today, I just wanna go ahead and uh, introduce today's facilitators. So my name is Ella Fowler. I am the Research and Learning Officer with the Cultural Orientation Resource Exchange. I've had the pleasure of working with CORE since August of 2019. Since that time, I've actually been working on the re revision uh, project with the Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators. And so I am so excited to finally be here today and sharing out with you uh, the great resources that CORE has created. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Amy Franz, our senior training coordinator, and Tu Phillips, our curriculum design officer. Amy and Tu are gonna be helping me in the back end. Amy is course technological guru. So she is there if you're having any issues with audio, if you are struggling to navigate any Zoom tools, she can help you in the back end. She's also gonna be monitoring that chat feature for us and sharing some links and some instructions as we go through today's um, webinar. Two, our curriculum design officer is joining us today, and she's going to be helping us monitor the Q&A feature, as well as participating in some upcoming scenarios that we have. So I do want to just uh, give them a big shout out and thank them both for helping and joining me today. Uh, greetings, Daryl. It's great to see you. <clears throat> All right. So I do want to take a moment to explain um, to today's objectives. Uh, as I noted at the start of this webinar, this is part one of a two-part series on the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. Today, we're really going to be focusing on these objectives, which are to explain why it's important for any individual working in refugee resettlement to be familiar with the COONIs, explain the updates made to the COONIs and how these updates strengthen CO programming, identify core resources available to help you learn and train others on the COONIs. Today's training is a little bit more on a higher level, whereas next week's training, we're really gonna delve into how to design CO programming around the CO ONIs. We do hope that individuals attend both trainings as the purpose of these trainings was that you would take them together to be able to achieve our objectives. So I'm getting a, um, yes, thank you, Amy. I can take that off. Uh, all right. A few reminders um, before we really get started. Today's webinar is very interactive, okay? So I need you all to focus. I have you for 60 minutes. I promise during the 60 minutes, it's gonna be well worth your time. So please give me my, uh, please give me your time by closing out of your email, shutting down your Teams or putting it on Do Not Disturb, closing out of your Gchat, your Slack, whatever it is you use internally, go ahead and just close out of that now. For our interaction today, um, we are going to be using the Q&A feature to ask questions. So if you have any questions um, of me, please go ahead and submit those using that Q&A feature. You're gonna use the chat feature to engage with us. So you guys have already learned where that chat feature is. And so throughout today, please go ahead and, and engage with us. And then we're also gonna have a poll to test your knowledge. Great question in the uh, chat feature about next week's webinar. We will be sending out the link to register in response to this webinar. So you will be able to uh, register if you have not registered for that webinar. Closed captioning for this webinar is enabled. You can go ahead and add it on, uh, enable it on the Zoom toolbar. One of my kryptonites as a facilitator is I like to talk really fast. So if I do talk too fast for you, please just let me know by using the chat feature and ask me to slow down um, or you're talking too fast and I will repeat um, what I have said. Lastly, uh, CORE will share today's webinar recording within 72 hours with all registrants. As I mentioned, this is part one of a two-part series, so we will share um, with all registrants from both webinars next week the recording, a frequently asked question summary, and all of the materials from both webinars. So to kind of get things uh, kicked off and have some engagement, I want you all to go and pull up that chat feature, and I want you to share with me 
what is your title and what are three phrases that you think describe your job? So for me, I am the research and learning officer and three phases that I would uh, select would be I build capacity, I analyze data and I deliver training. So go ahead and share your title in three phrases that describe your job. So Amy just put in the chat that she delivers trainings, she manages technology, and she supports Ella. All right, we got RMP Case Aid, Community Resource Coordinator. Mariel says she's the post-arrival program officer. She does training, she analyzes data, and she supports service providers. Anne is a volunteer coordinator, and she recruits, trains, and provides training to volunteers. Um, and place family mentors, excuse me, Anne. Lillian, you're a program director. You are a leader and you support and provide training. Fantastic. Jillian, you're a cultural orientation specialist and you share vital information, answer questions, and connect clients to resources. Blanche, you deliver cultural orientation. Great. Michaela, you're a resettlement specialist. You unite families, establish self-sufficiency, and provide access to resources. Aubrey, you're a refugee education and employment manager. You supervise staff, oversee grants, help refugees apply for and obtain jobs. Great. Logan, great to see you again, Logan. You're a CO instructor. You deliver training, coordinate scheduling, and support clients and staff. Wonderful. Wow. So there's lots of things coming in, and I think it's just really great and speaks to the wide, uh, <clears throat> the wide variety of individuals who are involved in the delivery of cultural orientation, key messages. Because you showed up here today, we here at uh, the Cultural Orientation Resource Exchange consider you a CO provider. Uh, we define a CO provider as any individual who has the opportunity to deliver and engage in um, cultural orientation key messages. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for sharing your background and what you do with, um, within the, the jobs that you have. It's very illuminating just how many um, of us are here today and just the wide variety of backgrounds that we have. All right, so what are the cultural orientation objectives and indicators? So I wanna make a disclaimer before I really delve into things today that the Cultural Orientation Resource Exchange is not the owner of the CO objectives and indicators. There is a group called the Cultural Orientation Working Group, which is made up of the Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, the International Organization for Migration and leadership from national resettlement agencies and resettlement support centers. This CO working group manages and updates and determines how the CO ONIs are created. CORE is a technical assistance unit that supports CO providers like yourselves in um, implementing effective cultural orientation programming, which is inclusive of using the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. So if you have feedback today about the content of the CO ONIs, CORE is, is happy to collect that feedback, but please do understand that it is the cultural orientation working group who's ultimately in charge of managing, updating, and determining um, what happens with the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. Thank you, Syed. Um, am I frozen for other people? No, you're okay on my side. Okay, thank you, Amy. It might be on your end, Syed, so I would check your internet. Um, the other thing I want to say here is, is that there were some questions in the uh, registration about what's going to be happening with the ONIs and Welcome Core and just other expansions within resettlement. I want to let everyone know that the Cultural Orientation Working Group and leadership is addressing this already, and it is being worked on. Lastly, I will also share that I was a member of the Cultural Orientation um, task force, uh, the COO and I task force, and I'm also a member of the CO working group as part of my uh, role with CORE. And so as a result, I might use we in this presentation. I will do my best um, to try not to do that. But if I do say we, I mean um, the COO and I task force when I use that language. So I want to just share a little bit about the creation of the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. So the first iteration of the cultural orientation objectives and indicators uh, came out in the early 2010s. Uh, it was an initiative of the Bureau of Refugee, of Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, PRM, to create uh, cultural orientation objectives and indicators for overseas and domestic CO providers. 
Um, they released the overseas CO ONIs first, and then shortly thereafter, they really released a domestic version of the ONIs. Um, these ONIs were what we've been using uh, the last couple of years. And then in 2019, that CO working group that I mentioned um, determined that it was best to look at and update the cultural orientation objectives and indicators and identify um, what revisions need to be made. And uh, the reason that the leadership wanted to revise the CO ONIs is that they had learned a lot from the first iteration of the CO ONIs, and they wanted to also evaluate digital technology and literacy and where that might um, be appropriate to add to the CO ONIs. So from 2019 to 2021, there was a task force um, that was assembled to review and make recommendations on the revisions to the CO ONIs. We met every month during this period of two years um, there were uh, quite a few of us that sat on the task force, and um, between all of us, there was over 200 years of experience working in refugee resettlement. Some of the individuals had involved, been involved in the first iteration of the CO ONIs. All of the individuals that sat on the task force um, had access to on-the-ground CO providers to provide feedback and make recommendations on the ONIs. In 2021, the working group um, approved the revisions that the task force proposed. Um, and during this meeting, it was discussed that CORE should conduct user testing with overseas and domestic CO providers to help identify what training and resources would be needed to uh, release a revised um, cultural orientation objectives and indicators. So CORE did connect or connect conduct <laughs> user testing with overseas and domestic CO providers. Um, overseas uh, providers actually delivered the added topics um, to refugees resettling to the United States and domestic CO providers participated in user testing with CORE to identify, uh, again, what resources they would need to uh, support revised CO ONIs for, for the network. So uh, in March of 2023, CORE released the revised CO ONIs along with these additional resources that I'm mentioning. So I do want to take a moment and I want to uh, show you all the new resources that CORE has created as a result of this user testing project. So one of the findings of CORE's user testing project, and if you all could just go ahead and let me know that you can see the CO Resource Exchange website on your screen, give me a thumbs up or a nod. Great, thank you so much for doing that. So um, user testing demonstrated to CORE that those that were involved in the, the delivery of CO on a day-to-day -day basis or on a weekly basis were very familiar with the CO ONIs. However, they struggle to communicate the role that the CO ONIs play for other individuals working in resettlement. So as a result, uh, CORE went ahead and we've created a, a CO ONI objectives and indicators page. And so you can find this page on CORE's website now, since this is about how to teach CO, you can find it under the teach drop down menu. And when you come to this web page, um, you will find <clears throat> An overview of the objectives and indicators, including a new one minute and 30 second video on what the CO ONIs are and how to use them in CO delivery. We also have the revised uh, CO ONI PDFs, which we're going to take, take a look at here in a little bit. And then we have some information on how to use the CO ONIs and then some frequently asked questions um, that are available on the page. So this new micro learning video that CORE has, like I said, is one minute and 30 seconds long. And it really uh, helps individuals understand um, what are the cultural orientation objectives and indicators and how do I use them in cultural orientation programming? So we're actually gonna watch this as a group. Um, and so I'm gonna pull this up on the screen. I do want you to make sure that you're listening closely because we're gonna have a quiz after this uh, video is done. The Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators There's so much that refugees need to learn about life in the U.S. Where do we start? Cultural Orientation, often called CO, is an education program where refugees get information on how to adapt to their new lives and achieve self-sufficiency in the U.S. CO takes place overseas and domestically. The Cultural Orientation Objectives and Indicators also called the CO ONIs, help us prioritize what to teach. They clearly outline what a refugee is expected to learn and be able to do by the end of cultural orientation. Both overseas and domestic CO repeat and build on the same topics. 
which creates consistent messaging for refugees throughout the resettlement process. This is known as the CO continuum. This consistent messaging improves refugees' abilities to recall the information learned and ultimately improves their ability to navigate life in the U.S. You can learn more about the COONIs at coresourceexchange.org. Um, so this video, <clears throat> it's one minute and 20 second video is a really great resource that you can share with colleagues who work in resettlement, volunteers, community partners, processing staff, and other individuals just to introduce them to the CO ONIs. So Rively, you've asked in the Q&A feature, some of my newcomers who are older than I am feel that they know more than I do when it comes to acclimating to the life in the United States. How do I navigate this? Um, that is an excellent, that is a very good question. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about this today as we're just kind of talking about what the COO and I's are and how they help us structure our programming. We will talk about this a little bit next week, but I would encourage you if you are a new CO provider to go ahead and register for our um, our learning platform and take our online courses where you can learn how to take a, a student-centered approach to CO delivery that really gets at what you're asking there. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit here about the, the ONIs and how they, they strengthen that CO continuum. So um, I told you guys we were going to have a quiz. And so we just watched that video. And so um, we're going to launch a poll on your screen. It is a fill in the blank. And the word bank is right there available for you on the screen. So go ahead and take a moment or two to complete this particular quiz and fill in the, the right questions or the right answers. All right, so I have about 30 of you who I do have answers for. So we're going to go ahead and end, end that poll. Um, and so let's go ahead and check our answers. All right, so number one, cultural orientation is the pre-departure and post-arrival education program designed to help refugees acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to adapt to their new lives and achieve self-sufficiency in the United States. CO providers, you all, use the culture orientation objectives and indicators to help prioritize what to cover in, um, in CO programming. So Katal asked earlier if everybody in cultural orientation has to come up with their own uh, key messages or their own ONIs, and the answer to that is no but. The cultural orientation objectives and indicators are broad as they're meant to apply to any individual resettling to the United States. So you are expected as CO providers to um, take the information and tailor it to your local community. And so that may mean identifying key messages that are specific um, to your local context or your local area. And we will talk about that um, as we go through today. Together, objectives and indicators outline what refugees are expected to do or say at the end of cultural orientation. And the CO continuum refers to the collaborative effort of individuals working in refugee resettlement globally to deliver CO in alignment with the CO ONIs. So thank you, Amy. She has put in the chat that you guys got 100% correct on the poll. So nice work. I do want to go uh, uh, unpack this concept of a CO continuum a little bit more and really unpack that question from Katol about is it, is it needed that each agency create their own CO ONIs? Um, why do we have these CO ONIs and what is their importance um, to, to CO programming? As I go through um, this particular section, I am going to be talking about research and evidence behind effective CO programming. And Amy's going to share a link to CORE's webpage for this in the chat if you want to explore more outside of this space. Um, but really, the culture, the concept of the CO continuum embodies all of the research and evidence that's out there for effective CO programming. Uh, so let's unpack this a little bit further. So first, we know I just said that the cultural orientation objectives and indicators are broad, as they're meant to support any individual resettling to the United States. You as CO providers are expected to use the cultural orientation objectives and indicators and your knowledge of the local environment at the time of CO to deliver CO programming that meets refugees' unique needs. Now, we all know as individuals who work in resettlement that refugees have questions about life in the U.S., throughout the resettlement process. Ooh, excuse me. So we know they have questions about life throughout the resettlement process. What they might have understood overseas becomes, might become unfamiliar and foreign when they arrive to the United States. 
Research and evidence around effective CO programming shows that it's most effective when it's repetitious in nature and focuses on knowledge, skills, and attitudes of refugees. We learned that the COONIs outline the knowledge, skills, and attitudes refugees are expected to gain by the end of the resettlement process. Thus, the COONIs create an opportunity for a repetitious continuum that allows CO providers to introduce and build upon what refugees know throughout the resettlement journey. We know that everything begins with overseas CO. In overseas CO, CO providers introduce a basic understanding of what life is gonna be like using the overseas COONIs. The goal is to create a framework about life in the US that others in resettlement can build upon. It also begins to address any misinformation the refugee had prior to the resettlement process. In domestic CO, providers use the domestic COONIs to continue to identify and build upon what refugees know about life in the US. Aligned with the overseas COONIs, domestic CO continues to help refugees adjust to life in the US and achieve the knowledge, skills, and attitudes they need to reach self-sufficiency. As refugees interact with staff at your agency and members of the community, these individuals also impact the messaging refugees hear about life in the US. They can support the spread of accurate information or misinformation. Bundling CO messages with other services and engaging local community members strengthens CO programming and in turn strengthens the CO continuum. When we engage individuals who are already engaged in the resettlement process, like processing staff, case managers, ESL employees, volunteers, leadership, community partners, sponsors, healthcare and government workers, et cetera, we can strengthen and support a strong CO continuum. There are resources through CORE called our whole office approach and resources for community partners and sponsors that we've gone ahead and put in the chat. We will be talking more in our session next week about these resources and how you can leverage them in the work that you have to create CO ONI, or create CO programming that is in alignment with the CO ONIs. Now, another recommendation from CORE to have effective CO programming um, is to utilize uh, opportunities to put uh, learners at the center of their learning process or refugees at the center of their learning process. And because the CO ONIs are broad, uh, we are able to create newcomer facing resources through core settle in digital properties. And so uh, because of our because the CO ONIs are broad and we are able to create refugee facing resources based on the CO ONIs, this allows you to create more tailored resources and CO programming that is specific to your community. Now, a common question CORE often gets is, do I have to cover everything outlined in the COONIs? And the answer is yes, but. The COONIs are meant to apply to a wide range of refugees resettling to the United States. And as we've already acknowledged as a group, refugees bring their own experiences and backgrounds to the resettlement process. Some may already be very, very knowledgeable of a CO topic and not need as much assistance, whereas others may lack any information on a specific topic. When refugees already have the knowledge and skills outlined in the CO ONIs, it's best to focus our efforts on other topics. We know, we all know time is limited and precious in the resettlement process. What the CO ONIs help you do is prioritize what to cover first before expanding to other topics of interest to refugees or others in resettlement. So the answer is yes, but you are to cover the CO ONIs, but using a student-centered approach and recognizing there is no one size fits all to apply the CO ONIs. CO programming must remain flexible and responsive to refugees' unique needs. As I noted before, you can learn more about taking a student-centered approach or how to apply effective adult learning methodologies to CO delivery in CORE's learning platform. So when we all work together, we create a CO continuum that is based on research and evidence and increase the likelihood that refugees are able to achieve self-sufficiency in the United States. So as you have seen, as I've gone through this presentation, I've used this concept of a house for an analogy. And the reason I've used this concept is has to do with this particular quote that CORE heard from a resettled refugee who participated in user testing with us. And this refugee said that the U.S. is like a house and cultural orientation is the key to open the door. And this quote really hit me because when I thought about it, if the U.S. is a house and CO is the key to open the door, then the CO ONIs provide the framework of the house. And if we don't, if we don't deliver on a framework, there is no door to open. So how does strengthen, how did the CO uh, ONI task force strengthen the CO ONIs to help further this concept of the CO continuum? Well, the task force looked at uh, three areas or three priorities, alignment, language, and digital technology. 
So let's unpack these just a little bit more. So when it comes to alignment, um, the task force really wanted to look at how we could better align the overseas and domestic COONIs with each other. As I mentioned before, um, the prior iteration of the COONIs were uh, not done at the same time. And so the overseas came first and then came the domestics. And so as a result, the language wasn't, um, or the topics weren't as aligned as they could be. So what the task force did is they looked at the continuing topics, so the topics that were already in the ONIs, and they looked at and they discussed, what do we need to start introducing an overseas CO to strengthen the CO continuum? What have we learned in the last couple of years with this first round of ONIs? What have we learned with COVID, with remote CO, with digital technology? And what are some things that we want to add to overseas CO to strengthen the continuum? And I want to stress here that when I say add to overseas CO, what I mean is, is that we took the domestic CO ONIs and we asked ourselves what indicators would make sense to have an overseas CO, and we approached it from, from that space. So there are now uh, whoops, 12 topics in overseas um, CO. Now in domestic CO, we did the same thing. We looked at the continuing topics and um, we looked at the topics. And so uh, we took the continuing topics and then we went ahead and added uh, digital technology and literacy and health and hygiene. Um, and when it comes to the domestic side of the review process, instead of adding more topics, the task force actually looked at how we could better align objectives and indicators with appropriate topics. So you may see that some objectives and indicators have moved. For example, newcomer rights and responsibilities. Um, there were some indicators and objectives related to a newcomer's rights and responsibilities that were under US laws, or they might've been under a role of the resettlement agency, and they have just been moved to rights and responsibilities to help organize the information better. This does not change when you might teach these topics within your CO programming, nor does it mean you have to rush to change um, and move those objectives and indicators to other topics. So Kalasi, you asked in the q and I'm curious why safety is not something addressed by inter the international topics, but just in the local topics. Um, so uh, Kalasi, which I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, the, if we look at the comparison of the side-by-side -side topics, um, safety is in the uh, COONIs as a domestic topic. Right, so it's here, it's listed as the 12th topic on the domestic side. The reason that it's not an overseas CO is look at the, there's 12 topics that overseas CO has to cover. And you have to remember that it, it's, there's a lot of information refugees need to learn about life in the United States. And we, when we look at the objectives and indicators on the domestic um, safety topics, they are very specific to the local community. And it would be very hard to bring up safety in overseas CO when an applicant does not where, know where they're going in the United States. But that doesn't mean that there aren't instances where safety can be talked about. So let me go ahead and show you. Thank you for that question, Classy. Cool beans, I love that saying. Cool beans is a great saying. So as I showed you before, this is the, the new web page for the COONIs, and we have newly revised um, PDFs for you all to use in, um, in cultural orientation uh, delivery. And so here are the domestic or the overseas, excuse me, COONIs. I'm very proud. They're newly designed. They look beautiful. We've added a, a table of contents to help UCO providers quickly navigate this document. So Kalasi, you, men you mentioned there that um, why isn't safety covered in the, over in the overseas COONIs? Well, it might not be a topic in the overseas COONIs, but there are gonna be indicators that touch upon safety so that we can introduce this topic. One example I like to point out actually is, is that you public assistance is not an overseas CO topic, but it is a domestic CO topic. You can find though, that if you come down here under the role of the resettlement agency and you scroll down, right here is an indicator related to public assistance. So the task force did think about this. They did ask themselves, are there, there are topics we can't completely cover in overseas CO because it would be unrealistic to put that burden on providers, but there are ways that we can begin to build the framework to help everyone in resettlement, including refugees, better understand uh, what is expected of them to achieve self-sufficiency in the US. Now, when we look at those domestic um, CO ONIs, again, beautifully designed, slightly updated. We have a table of contents that we can quickly navigate. 
And I want to direct our attention to this transportation topic, which we're going to use throughout the rest of my presentation today. We're going to hone in on this transportation topic and how it's been updated. So currently in the new COONIs, we have added transportation as an overseas objective. There is one objective in transportation and there is one indicator for overseas CO. Previously, this was not the case. There was transportation was not an overseas CO topic. There were no objectives or indicators under this topic um, for transportation. It may have been brought up in other topics, but it was not its own CO topic. Now in domestic CO, we have two objectives and we have seven indicators related to the topic of transportation. Um, so as we can see here, what this does is it better aligns our programming so that we know that we're introducing the idea that transportation options exist in most communities. And then we're building upon that in the United States by adding the second objective. It's still expected that domestic CO would cover this first objective about transportation options because there is so much information being covered in CO that a client might not remember this was discussed in overseas CO. Excuse me, I need to take a drink of water. So the next thing the task force looked at was um, language. And like I said before, we wanted to look at a, a language consistency. We wanted to make sure terms were consistent between the overseas and the domestic CO, like under US laws like under newcomer rights and responsibilities. We wanted to make sure that the AR-11 was being referred to in the same way. So we made uh, sure that everything was consistent and we duplicated language and objectives and indicators uh, when applicable um, in both overseas and domestic CO. But we also were applicable updated language to have again the concept of the continuum. We looked at measurability. So we really wanted to make sure that uh, CO providers could easily measure whether or not the knowledge, skills, and attitudes had been obtained by refugees participating in CO. And then the last thing we really looked at is what is realistic to cover in CO programming versus what needs to be covered in other programming outside of CO. And so we looked at how we can break down the indicators to be more measurable um, and to be clearer. So it might look like there are more indicators to cover in the CO ONIs, but realistically speaking, we've just taken some indicators and broken them down into more clear, realistic, and measurable um, indicators. So let's take a look at what this looks like with transportation, okay? So on your screen here is the old objective from the domestic CO and ICE for transportation. So this is the old objective, and these are old indicators. And I want you all to just to take a moment, and I want you to read these. So read the objective and read the indicator. And I want you to reflect, do you think these indicators are measurable? Why or why not? And would it be appropriate to add these indicators to over CCO? Why or why not? You can share your thoughts in the chat if you would like, although it's not required. I just want you to reflect on these questions. All right, I'm seeing some thumbs up. Great, I'm liking this new Zoom feature. It really makes it a little bit more interactive for me. Um, so I'm seeing some thoughts coming through the chat box. Muriel, you see, you say it's not appropriate to add this all to overseas because you think it would be overwhelming to clients. Yeah, it's quite a bit to quite a bit to add. Logan said awareness is really hard to measure. I agree with you. The task force talked about this quite a bit. Awareness. How do we measure whether or not they understand? Like, how can you measure understanding, right? Um, classy name three methods of public transportation. I like where your head's going. All right, so this is basically what the task force did with every objective and every indicator that was in the overseas and domestic ONIs as a group. That's why it took two years, okay? So we really did this on a much larger scale and we really asked ourselves, what is measurable? What isn't measurable? What do we want to add to overseas and what should say? So let's look and see um, how, how uh, the results of this. <clears throat> And um, I just want to highlight here that Daryl, who's just chatted in the chat, he was actually part of the task force. So um, he knows a lot of what we're talking about. Um, so as we know, participants can state that transportation options exist in, the, in most communities. So this is the new updated objective for overseas and domestic CO. Now in overseas CO, we have participants can list at least three public transportation options available and can explain why these options vary by location. Easy, right? We can measure that. It's consistent with what's in the domestic CO. 
And it, it's very realistic. It's realistic to expect prior to coming to the U.S. for a client to be able to, if they receive full CO, list three public transportation options and that these options vary by location. So we're already managing expectations that the transportation options you hear may not be in your location, but these are options that you might have. And then domestically, we've gone ahead and um, participants can identify at least one public transportation option available them to them locally. So before it was participants can understand public transportation's options available to them locally. And options, there was multiple. And then we had understand. We've taken all of that ambiguity out. And now you just need to make sure that refugees understand and can identify at least one option that's available to them. They can explain how to navigate this one option, and they can explain how to safely board, ride, and exit this one option. Now, we do say here that they are likely to use and, and so on and so forth, and that is to provide flexibility to uh, local agencies to determine what is the best transportation option. So Katol asked earlier that ONI question, do we all have to have our own CO ONIs? The answer is no but, right? So here, the ONIs have provided you with the framework, but you, on the domestic side, you all as an agency need to decide what's the best transportation option we want to promote. Is it taxis? Is it the bus system? Is it the metro? What makes the most sense? So then the last thing that um, <clears throat> the task force looked at was that digital technology and literacy uh, topic. And just recognizing the role that digital technology is playing in our everyday lives, the task force thought it was really, uh, it, was it would be responsible of us to look at the COO and I's and identify how can we incorporate digital technology into the work that we do. And so what the task force decided was they went ahead and they created a new topic called digital technology and literacy. And this digital technology and literacy topic, I really want to stress here, does not imply that as a CO continuum, we are responsible for providing technology to uh, refugees and helping them make sure they know how to use that technology. The digital technology and literacy CO and I focus on that refugees know that they're going to interact with technology during the resettlement process and how to do so safely. So it's much more focused on awareness of digital technology and their interactions with it during the resettlement process. I also want to stress that this is a new topic, and we know that for a lot of you, you might be um, stressed about how to implement this in your communities or in your work. We are going to host a webinar uh, an exchange on this particular topic later this summer um, so that we can support everybody in how we can, you know, address this topic as a ACCO continuum. Um, <clears throat> so I want to show how this impacts um, how this impact that topic of transportation, right? Because we've been looking at transportation. So as I said before, for the digital technology and literacy topic, not only do we add it as a topic to overseas and domestic CO, we also looked at other places and other indicators that we needed to update to really just make sure that we were um, approaching this in a responsible manner. So in the updated COONIs, we now have this objective under the topic of digital technology and literacy, which says that participant can, participants can name at least three instances in their early resettlement when they might be required to use technology. And then the example that we have here is learning public transportation. So as much as we possibly could, we did look at other indicators and objectives under other topics that should be updated to include digital literacy and technology as appropriate and applicable. Um, so Mashid, you said this is something that you need to practice to learn and know more about. They will forget the details by the time they need to use the local transportation um, when they arrive in the US. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. Um, and just like recognizing how often we have to be repetitious in this process. As we learned before, repetition really creates a strong CO continuum um, because refugees are learning and inundated with so much information um, we need to make sure that we repeat ourselves. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to some Q&A before we move into some practice um, and action and actually unpack how uh, we've created a stronger CO continuum um, with the transportation CO ONIs. So I do wanna pause here. If you have any questions, I want you to go ahead and share those in the chat or in the Q&A feature. I do see one here from, I believe uh, Natalie is how you say your name. And Natalie, you're asking about the CO assessment that you should use and that right now you're using Cal. 
If we have any overseas CO providers on the call, Natalie's talking about how domestically, um, domestic CO providers are required to assess CO programming through what is called the CO model assessment. The currently right now, the most updated available assessment to use is the CO model assessment found on CORE's website. Um, Amy can get that link for you all and she can share it to you in the chat. We do have the assessment available um, in multiple languages. One of the next things that the CO uh, working group is going to be looking at um, as a leadership is what updates do we need to make and look at when it comes to um, the assessment, but that is a long time coming down the road. And right now, the most important, or I shouldn't say the most important, the assessment that you can use is the CAL assessment. Um, you can also look at creating your own assessment if you would like, uh, but right now the CAL, assess the CAL assessment is still sufficient. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, you talk here in the chat about how you uh, help um, refugees uh, navigate public transportation and provide maps um, for important places, and they can move without internet on their phone. Absolutely. I've seen some great um, promising practices in the field of experiential learning around public transportation. I'm having volunteers uh, take clients or applicants on uh, buses and helping them navigate their new, their new communities. Um, so that's a great suggestion. Thank you. So I do know that some of you did have questions about, you know, designing the, the CO O&Is um, and how to design CO programming. And I do, again, want to encourage you to join us next week. We are going to unpack that more and, and give you, uh, hopefully give you a, an action plan for steps that you can take to re use the revised CO O&Is. But I do want to stress that CO programming is so different across the globe. Uh, we all encounter different challenges. And so it's it's uh, how you're going to deliver CO. It varies a lot on funding, staffing, your local community, um, and just a variety of different pieces. So Logan says, if we develop our own CO assessment, how do we input, the, input those into IRIS? Um, that's a great question, Logan. And that's something that you need to talk to your national resettlement agency about. They're the ones who determine what requirements are across their specific networks. I just, I remember or recall that the cooperative agreement states that you have to assess CO. It doesn't state which assessment you have to use, but your national RA might require you to use a specific assessment. So I would follow up with your national resettlement agency, which I believe is EMM. Elisa, if digital literacy was added as a topic, wouldn't that mean there are 16 topics now? No, we've actually merged the topic of health and hygiene into one topic instead of two separate topics. Um, so I'll go back here to that slide here um, to show the topics. So uh, we have 15 topics of oh, this. There we go. We have 15 topics in domestic because health and hygiene have been merged. And then we added digital literacy and technology. And then it's 12 topics because we added these other topics um, and kept travel. Muriel, just to confirm, these updated CO topics and objectives will be included starting in fiscal year 2024 cooperative agreement. That is apt, that is correct, Muriel. The updated or the revised CO ONIs, you're not required to use until fiscal year 2024. So we have the rest of the remainder of the fiscal year 2023 to think about and prepare for using these CO ONIs. Um, I cannot speak to PRM's monitoring plan for the COO and I's or how they will monitor against this. And if you have questions related to that, I request that you reach out to your national resettlement agency for further guidance. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we are going to now move to a practice in action. And so um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Amy to read our scenario because I've been talking a lot at you and just to kind of change things up. So, Miss Amy. And drink some water, Ella. Thanks. So, a scenario here with Luce. Luce is resettling to the U.S. During overseas CO, Luce learns public transportation varies widely. She also learns of three transportation options, including buses, subways, and bike shares. Luce is told the local resettlement agency will help her navigate the local transportation available when she arrives in the U.S. Okay. 
Ella, you're muted. Thank you. I drank water and I muted myself. Um, so thank you, Amy. I want you guys to go ahead and share in the chat. What does Luz learn about transportation in the United States? Transportation options, right? And she learns about buses, subways, and bike shares. That she learns that they vary by location. Ah, uh, Bridget, thank you. She learns that their agency will help her. Absolutely. Great. So that's what happens in overseas CO. So let's build upon our scenario here and go to um, the next step. Go ahead, Amy. Luce arrives in the United States. During CO, Luce is asked what she knows about pu public transportation. Luce explains transportation varies, and she sees buses are used here often. Luce is told that buses are the most reliable local transportation option. She travels on the bus during the session. She learns how it works, how much it costs, and how to safely board and depart the bus. After the session, she takes the bus home. Thank you, Amy. So share in the chat. So Luce has now received overseas CO and domestic CO. Would you expect Luce to remember everything learned about transportation in the US? Why or why not? Logan, not without a lot more bus riding practice. Mary Lou, no. Molly, probably not, since she has a lot more stuff to learn too. Razia, yes, she did practice it. Okay. No, I don't think so. It's a gradual process. Adrian, she'll probably retain uh, what's relevant for her city. She already used the bus. She needs more practice. Absolutely. So the answers here are going to vary, right? Um, by CO delivery, we have delivered CO to Luce. She has received CO in alignment with the CO ONIs. But we know here that Luce does need more support in being able to achieve the CO ONIs and be able to do what she's expected to do by the end of the resettlement process. And so it, it wouldn't be really uh, realistic of us to, ex to expect Luce to remember everything she's learned um, in, in CO at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look at some scenarios that could happen with um, overseas, uh, or a scenario that could happen with the CO continuum um, and continue to look at this practice in action. So Luce has been in the U.S. for three weeks. Donna is a volunteer who works at a local resettlement agency. I want you to listen to the two possible encounters that could happen during Luce's resettlement process when she interacts with Donna. Um, my colleague, too, is going to be Donna today, and Amy is going to be Luce. So go ahead and listen to these two scenarios. Hi, hey, Luce. How are you today? Hi, Donna. I am doing okay. How are you? I'm well, thank you. We need to go to the healthcare clinic. I'm going to get an Uber for us to travel there. I prefer Uber over bus because you don't have to wait as long. Um, I thought the bus was the best transportation option to take. Who told you that? I never take the bus. It's just not convenient. Ubers are a better option for us. It can be costly, but that's okay. You can take, you should take an Uber whenever you can. Let's go. The Uber's on its way. You both. So version one, let's go to version two. Sarah, I get the immediate chills from the scenario. Yes. Version two. Hi, Luz. How are you today? Hi, Donna. I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I see that we need to go to the healthcare clinic today. I thought we could take the bus to the clinic together. Have you taken the bus yet? Yes, I took it for the first time last week. Oh, that's great. The bus is the best transportation option to use in our community. How was your experience taking the bus? Uh, it was okay. I don't really understand how to pay for it. Oh, that's understandable. Learning new systems can be difficult. So how about we take the bus to your appointment today and we can practice together? Okay, sounds good. Great. Thank you, ladies. Apologies for this uh, black blob on the bottom of your screen. Uh, Logan pointed it out in the chat. 
this happened to me this morning. Um, it usually goes away all the time when you move off of it. But for some reason, the longer I'm in Zoom, the more it just sits there and it doesn't go away. So apologies if that is, is bothering you. Um, but but thank you. Um, thank you, Logan, for pointing that out. So Luce has been in the U.S. for, for three weeks, um, as we already talked about. So she's now gotten CO and she just interacted with Donna. So I want you guys to share in the chat which version um, of the scenarios that we just heard has a positive impact on Luce's resettlement experience and why. All right, I'm seeing the second one, but why? Why is the second one a better impact? Muriel reinforces the CO topic and helps her learn. Todd, why is it more helpful? Uh, Logan says it reinforces his previous information because it's consistent. It empowers her to use what is accessible to her. Mm -hmm. The second version, because it gives her more experience with the bus system. It's very easy to, to helpful to walk the client through the process. Um, doesn't undermine her trust in the RA. Molly, you get an applause. That's beautiful. Absolutely. By having this consistent continuum and having Donna reinforce what the RA has already shared, now we're not undermining the case manager or other individuals at the agency. Because it may be true that Luce develops a stronger relationship with Donna as, as a volunteer. All right, now I wanna ask you all, would Donna be able to achieve version two if she uh, did not know about the COO and ICE? Would she have been able to achieve version two if she did not know about the COO and ICE? Possibly for Mary Lou. Humaria says no. No, most likely not. No, no. <clears throat> so Elisa says she thinks so. It's a basic training topic. Well, if Donna doesn't know about the ONI, is Elisa, and in this scenario, we're not saying Donna's a CO provider, right? She's she's just somebody who works with your agency, who's volunteered to help take refugees to an appointment. And so, if Donna, um, your the assumption there, if it's a basic training topic. I think is that maybe Donna will have heard about CO, but in this particular scenario, we're imp we're implying that she has not. Sarah Evans, yes, the COO and I's are a nice resource to get volunteers on the same page quickly. So that resource I shared earlier with the micro learning video, that is a one minute and 20 second um, resource that you can send to volunteers along with a copy of the domestic cultural orientation objectives and indicators. And you can say, hey, this is what I'm required to cover in CO programming. And it would be really helpful in your interactions with clients if you could reinforce these messages. Just so you know, here are some messages that you might be able to use in your upcoming interaction. So I want to take a moment here and I want um, you all to reflect on this question and share in the chat. What is the impact of a strong CO continuum on a refugee's resettlement experience? So there is a question in the chat about, is there anything about those who are not able to speak and read English? I don't quite understand your question, but learning English is a required CO uh, overseas and domestic topic. Um, there are also other resettlement services related to helping uh, clients be connected to learning English in the United States. Um, awesome. So I'm seeing some annotations come up here on the screen, which uh, my crew is doing here for us. So makes it more trustworthy and consistent. Absolutely. Um, increase retainment of knowledge. Right, absolutely. If we are all, again, doing a re repetitious CO continuum and building upon what clients know, um, we're going to increase their ability to retain the information. Provides confidences and reduces uncertainty, absolutely. Helps them feel somewhat in control, 100%. So the CO and I's help you prioritize what to cover first, but if a client has already achieved that information to the point earlier where somebody put in the chat that the clients are older and they already feel like they know the information. Well, in that instance, assess them, you know, are, have they already achieved the indicators? 
and make it a conversation. What do you know about this topic? Oh, you already know this information. Then I'm going to cover this other information. It helps to manage clients' expectations. Absolutely. Not only does it help to manage client expectations, it also help, helps to manage the continuum's expectations. When we all use the COO and I's, what we can do is we can go to our community partners, to our volunteers, to other individuals in resettlement and say, this is what we're required to cover in COO and I programming. And I know you're really interested in this topic, but I don't have enough time. This is what I have to cover. How can we partner together to address this topic in other services? Become self-sufficient sooner, absolutely. A stronger CO continuum is gonna help clients take control of their own learning and ideally reduce their dependency upon domestic resettlement agencies. Help clients adjust culturally in their community, save so many issues on the line for both agencies and clients, decreases stress, and gives them a variety of options to meet their needs. I'm seeing a lot more great things coming into the chat, but just due to time, I'm gonna go ahead and save these. We will share this out um and follow up so you guys can see what everybody has said but as you can see the having a strong co continuum has a resounding impact on the resettlement process um, for for refugees so thank you guys so much for sharing this so um i didn't want to just due to time i'm not going to unpack all of these we just kind of talked about them um, in your slide but an impact of a strong co continuum really allows us to take a student-centered approach reduce cognitive overload, address misinformation, and manage expectations. Next week, we're going to unpack this even more and really talk about how you can use the ONIs and what core resources are available to you to design strong CO programming. Now, uh, I do want to highlight again before we depart today those core resources that we shared with you. We also have an updated CO-defined self-paced course, which I encourage any, encourage any individual working in resettlement uh, takes a look at. It talks about how um, CO is delivered overseas and domestically and builds upon those CO ONIs that we talked about today. So I'm going to um, go ahead and thank you guys so much uh, for your time um, and your participation today. Uh, I do ask that you please, please, please take some time to complete course survey and give us your feedback. I really do look at those. It will help me with next week's webinar. I do hope that you all join us again next week. Uh, we're going to be offering this again on Tuesday, May 23rd at 9 a.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Eastern. So we hope you can be there. We will be recording it. So if you cannot, go ahead and register and you'll receive a recording in the follow-up emails. I do encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to that Core Connection newsletter just to make sure that you are staying up to date on anything related um, to Core. Thank you guys so much for all of the thank yous in the chat. I really appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you do. You guys are fabulous people. And on behalf of all the work that you do, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you all have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to stay on here today, or you can reach out to CORE at um, our email address, which is CO Resource Exchange at rescue.org. Um, you're very welcome, Muriel. I am I pride our, I pride ourselves, or we pride ourselves on having interactive um webinars and really practicing what we preach so we are happy that you found today's uh session interactive and, and engaging um it always goes by way 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 too click uh too quickly great muriel i'm so happy we inspired you um for your upcoming trainings um so thank you all so much oh amy's glasses are the best what and during her interview when she interviewed with us i was like well, my first comment i was like i love her glasses she's in she's in she's too spunky my glasses got me my job. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Hamid. I really appreciate it. And Mohammed and Jamal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. We will see you next week, hopefully. And if not, we hope to see you in a future core training. Um, we are having them as frequently as we possibly can with the size of our team. So again, thank you all so much. We hope you have a beautiful rest of your Tuesday and enjoy the day wherever you are. Bye.